Today we've been told that given the graph of f of x, they want us to find a couple of different things. Uh, 2 f of x, f of x plus 2, f of x plus 3, and negative 2 f x plus 2 minus 1. So the easiest and simplest way for me to demonstrate this is we're going to zoom out just a little bit and we're going to use uh, transparency over top of the original graph. So you'll see a little bit of glare here at the bottom uh, and that's just from my transparency and the overhead lights in my office. So anyway, uh, if you've watched, I've got another video like this where we use a, a dry erase marker and a transparency. So we're going to start with a couple, of, with a real simple, simple one, which is f of x and part a here says 2 f of x. So we're looking at 2 f of x. Now what does this mean? Well you've got to remember and I'm going to just take a sheet of paper here and, and kind of remind you guys but you've got to remember that when you have you know let's say f of x equals 3x plus 5 okay you've got a function f of x equals 3x plus 5 that this can readily be substituted for y. So when I tell you 3 f of x what I'm really saying to you is 3 y. So, you know, in essence, when you look at this problem here and I say find 2 f of x, what I'm saying is I need you to multiply the y value by 2. Okay? So, if we look at 2 f of x, we want to multiply each y value by 2. So, I come over here and I say, okay, well, let's start with this x value here. The y value is 1, 2, 3. So, 2 times 3 is going to be 6. So, 4, 5, 6 and we plot a point. This y value is also 3. Uh, 2 times 3 is also 6. This y value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but it is negative, so negative 5. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go down to negative 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's there at the very, very bottom of my screen. Um, this y value is 0, so 2 times 0 is zero. Here this y value is four. Okay. So two times four is eight. This y value is also four. Two times four is eight. This y value is negative two and two times negative two is negative four. And now that you've made your points, find each y value, multiply it by two. You simply connect the dots. So we're going to go there there, there, and there. So what you see in blue is 2 times f of x. What you see in gray is the original function f of x. And what you basically see is symmetrically about the x-axis this graph has been stretched. So you see all of the same features. There's a flat here, there's a, a, a positive slope here, a negative slope here, and they've all been stretched. They've all been magnified in the y direction. Okay? Now, step number two. We've been asked to find f of x plus 2. Okay? So we've been, find, we've been asked to find f of x plus 2. Now, if you ask yourself, what are we doing? We are adding 2 to each x value. We are adding 2 to each x value. But the net effect of that is to shift the graph to the left. And if you've not watched my video on uh, translation of functions, um, or if you've not covered translations of functions in your class, um, I'm not going to go over that uh, in, in great depth here, but basically um, whenever you modify your x value, um, it's going to have the appearance of doing the opposite to the function. So this is x plus 2. That means we're going to move to the left two places. So basically what we do is take each of these points and move them left two places. So move that left two, move that left two, move that left two, move this left two, move this left two. 2, move this left, 2, and move this left, 2. 
And now guess what? Connect the dots. Okay, so it's the exact same function, but we've picked it up and moved it to the left too. And the fun thing to do with uh, uh, an overhead or a transparency like this, um, some people call them acetates, um, what you can do is just, you, you can move this to the right, and you can see that basically what I did was I traced this function and then moved it to the left two spots. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. You can actually see that basically what you've done is pick this exact function up and move it to the left two places on the x-axis. So that is f of x plus 2. Now the third thing we've been asked to find is right here f of x plus 3. So we've been asked to find f of x quantity plus 3. So that's what we've been asked to find. Now, what is this modifying? It is not grouped with x, so this is a y modifier. So what we are saying here is we have been asked to modify this graph in the y direction. Whenever you have a y modifier, you do not do the opposite. So what that means is this is going to move this entire graph up three points. So we take every x point and we move up one, two, three. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, and 3. We move every point up 3. And then what? As usual, connect the dots. Now, again, this is kind of a fun thing to do with an overhead or a transparency because you can see if I slide this down by moving all these points up three if I slide it down what do I have I have the original graph and if I slide it back up one two three points in all locations um, what I have is the newly modified graph in blue which is f of x quantity plus three okay um, the last one is the fun one. You know they always say save the best for last, right? Uh, is this one, okay? Negative 2, I'll write it out bigger, negative 2 f of x plus 2 minus 1. Now, the way this is going to work, folks, it's real simple. This negative sign is going to invert this graph flip it over the x-axis. This is going to stretch it vertically so all the y values will be, multiple, will be doubled. Then we will move it to the left 2 and we will move it down 1. And the real trick is what order to do that in. Well the simplest way to do this, the way I like to do it, um, is you can take this graph, okay, you can take this graph and what I, what I want you to ask yourselves is, if I move this graph, okay, so if I move it left 2 and I move it down 1, then I stretch it and then I flip it, will I get the same result, will I get the same result if I flip it, stretch it, and then move it, okay? And the answer to that is no, you will not get the same result. And so, what we have to do is we have to ask ourselves, okay, what do we do first? What do we do first? And in this particular instance, um, what you need to realize is that the two should not affect each other. In other words, um, what I'm saying is um, if you if you do them in one order and then you do them in a different order, you have to figure out what has a net effect of zero on the other one. In other words, this should not change the fact that the graph moved over to the left two. This should not change the fact that the graph moved up one. So what I like to do um, is to think about it this way. The first step, the simplest step, the easiest step. 
is to do the inversion first. Okay, I like to do the inversion first. So I look at this and I say, where is this point? Well, it's at 3. So the inversion of that would be at negative 3. Same thing here. 3, we're going to move that to negative 3. This is at negative 5. We're going to move it up to 5. That's at 0. This is at positive 4, so we're going to move it to negative 4. Negative 4. And this is negative 2, so we're going to move it to positive 2. Okay? So that's the first step. I have inverted the graph. I've taken care of the negative sign. Now what's the second step? Is to multiply all of the y values by 2. Okay? So stretch my y values. Well, look at my y value here in blue. It's at negative 3. So where should the new y value be? The new y value should be at negative 6. So 4, 5, 6. 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to erase the old values Okay, as, as we move along. This y value is at 5. The new y value should be at 10. This y value is at 0. It's going to remain at 0. Um, these y values here are at negative 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to move those to negative 8. And this y value was at 2. We're going to move it to 4. Okay? So now we have done our vertical stretch. So we flipped this graph and we've stretched it vertically. What's the next step? Well, I like to cheat. Okay, <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots. Okay, and if I do this uh, uh, very carefully and very cautiously, um, I can make a, a pretty nice little graph here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the dots. Okay, so this has been flipped and it has been... Um, it has been inverted or flipped and it has been stretched, multiplied by 2. Now, this says to move left 2, this is left 2, and this is down 1. Okay, left 2 and down 1. So what I'm going to do, because I have a transparency, is I can cheat and I can move this graph 1, 2 points to the left, and down 1 point. Okay? Now, I've moved this graph 2 to the left and down 1, and this graph that you see here in blue is negative 2 f of x plus 2 minus 1. What you see in blue is now that exact version. And what I like to look at is you had a point at 0, 0. Okay? You can't flip 0, 0. You can't stretch 0, 0. Did 0, 0 move left 2 and down 1? And the answer is yes, it did. Left 2 and down 1. Okay, uh, And that's how you know you've done this properly. If you have a point that goes through 0, 0, um, it has to get, in this case, moved left 2 and down 1. Um, otherwise, you've done this improperly. Um, and the simplest way for me to remember this is to follow the order of operations. So the order, order of operations, you're going to multiply by negative 2, then you're going to add and subtract, which is your left two and down one. Um, so it's a real fun way to do this on um, on a transparency. Now, what if someone were to ask you to do this exact same thing, but, oh boy, I don't happen to have any transparencies. How would you go about doing that? Well, the other way you could go about doing this is really simple. Um, you could take an individual point or, or several individual points and write them down and let's just take uh, I'm going to take a couple of points so this point here is negative 2 uh, comma negative 5 this point you know, is obviously 0 0 this point here is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 so 5 comma 4 and I'm just going to take these three points okay these three points and to each point, we want to change the sign of y. We want to change the sign of y. That's how we get this graph to flip. 
we want to multiply the y value by 2, right? Because what do we want? We want negative 2 f of x plus 2 minus 1. Subtract 2 from x and subtract 1 from y in that order. So if I were to take these values and I'm just doing I'm just doing this point, this point, and this point, but I could do every point on the graph. Um, okay, so the first thing I have to do is change the y value sign. So change that to plus 5, minus 0, and minus 4. Then we want to multiply these by 2. Okay, so if we do that, what are the three points I get? I get negative 2, comma, 10. I get 0, comma, 0. And I get 5, comma, negative 8. Okay, so I've done that, I've done that. Now what? Subtract 2 from x. So I get negative 4, negative 2, and 3. And then subtract 1 from y, I get 9. And I get negative 1. And I get, if I subtract 1 from this y value here, I get negative 9. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's plot these three points on our graph. So we plot negative 4 and 9, which is going to be way up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we plot that point. This is going to be negative 2, negative 1. And this is going to be 3, comma, negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, if we do it that way, using those, just those three points, take our graph, put it back where we had it originally, okay? Back where we had it originally. And we're going to move this guy left 2 and down 1. And what do we see? If we do that, you notice I have a gray point here, okay? I have a gray point here, and I had a gray point here. And so what ends up happening is, you know, you can do this with each point using what I call a table format, where you start with the original points, and you do each of these operations to the original points, and you end up with the new points, okay? So it's a fun way to graph functions and transformations of functions. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, please let me know.